Nice right. morning. How are you? How are we doing? Good. So I think tomorrow, if I have my math right, is the midpoint of camp. Uh, what have been kind of your takeaways from what you've seen so far? Um, I didn't know it was midpoint, but pretty sure yeah, probably 10, is. Ten, I think tomorrow. Probably is. Um, our guys have been great. I think their work ethic, their attention to detail. They've done a great job in situational football. We've done a lot of it in the first eight that we've had so far. So, um, you know, really, I think their mindset coming into this in terms of what we have to work on. You know, there's opportunities for a lot of kids to play because we do have really good depth. Um, and I think they're all taking advantage of, of those opportunities. And um, knock on wood, if we had it, we're, we're relatively healthy, haven't had any injuries during training since we started. And we're starting to get some other guys back, you know, and, and Kaho and Seattle and those guys. So um, it's been really good so far. You mentioned the depth. Is this the best depth you've had in your time here, would you say? I do want to say that, but I don't want to jinx it. So okay. yes, it is. You know, I think there's there's more than just one person at a position. So um, there's not as much experience. You know, you lost that group of you know with Gainsey and Dorian and that group and Mo Austin guys that were here for a really really long time. But I think our depth is better. It's just trying to that race to maturity from an experience standpoint to get those guys ready. When you when you look at uh, <clears throat> I'm going to mispronounce it Oluwafemi Femi. Femi. Close. Just go uh, with Femi. Time. Yeah, just right. go with Femi. When you look at him, he mm -hmm. just looks like an impressive football player. Would yeah. you Would you agree with that? When and you talk to him, he's an impressive <laughs> person. Um, everything about Femi is impressive. He's he's a he's a dialed in guy that you know loves playing football. Um, you know, one of those guys, the classic first in, last out, studies a ton of tape. Um, is all about everything you want to be about, and, and uh, he's been outstanding since he's been here. So. What's what do you hope on his impact will be? Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's the, it's that depth standpoint. We felt yeah. really good with Darius, and then we were kind of banged up at the other spots. Kind of who's that second linebacker that, that plays with him? So, you know, the more we can get him playing and Kane playing and Che playing, and then get Kaho back. You know, um, John John's coming off of baseball. Um, you know, it's it's a it, it's there's a lot there, but we the one thing that he has over almost all those guys is a ton of experience because he played a ton of football at Cal. Um, you know, I, we talked about a lot in our last game. He played 17 tackles against us. Um, he's a really, really good football player that's got a lot of experience. So we're excited about his contributions as we move forward here. Devin, Go ahead. Devin Cookwood uh, looks noticeably bigger. Uh, what, what have you seen from him in terms of improvement, skill, uh, physicality? Yeah, I just, I mean, Kirk's been great because he came in and played as a true freshman. Um, and then has just continued to grow physically. Um, I think he's just starting to fill out. He's always been a tall, long corner, but he's finally up over 200 pounds. He's a little over 200 right now. Um, he's worked extremely hard at it. I know, you know, with our nutritionists and with KB, um, with Ross and with KB, he's done a really good job of sticking to the plan that they had for him. Um, and that was a goal of him to put some, put a little bit of weight on here in the offseason, and he's done it. Um, I think technically he's really um, has taken a step. You know, in terms of his his skill development, and I think the one thing about Devin is that he's always trying to get better in everything that he does, whether it's press technique, off technique, special teams, gaining weight, what he's doing in the weight room, trying to get faster, all those things. He's just constantly looking to improve. So, um, you know, he he kind of got thrown in the mix early here um, because of our depth at corner two years ago, and now, you know, going into year three, he's one of the Wiley veterans back there. Him and Humper, the older guys at at the corner spot. So. Um, feel really good about where he's going and how he continues to develop. What yep. impact have you seen from uh, Cody Whitfield on the cornerbacks? Yeah, I think Cody's done a great job. You know, he's got a. We loved him when he was here as a GA. I hated when we lost him, um, but he went to go take his first full-time job at Sac State, um, and then we were hopeful we could get him back. And then we just split the secondary up. I think most teams in the country have done that now. Um, a lot of times we're playing five and six DBs. Um, in certain situations and have one guy to coach them all, it, it, it gets hard. And I also think from a technical standpoint, what a corner does is slightly different than what a safety does. So I think the, the fact that we could break that position up and Cody can take the corners and then Brian can take all the safeties and the, and the dime linebackers and the nickel, um, I think has just helped those guys in terms of just another, <clears throat> another set of eyes. And then in individuals, and during practice, you know, they're getting a little bit more individual corner work, while the safeties are getting a little bit more individual safety work. Darius was talking about the uh, off-season running program. He said that you guys want to be the best conditioned team in the Pac-12. Did you have any input on that, or was that more like KB and some of the other people? No, that's all of us. Everybody has input on everybody. We do everything as a staff, so, you know, we all talked about what, what we need to be, and I think um, as a group, you know, I think the, the conditioning part and the 
and the being able to run. You know, football is a is a running game. A runner, you got to be able to run in this sport. You know, it's not just in the weight room the whole time and who the strongest team is. It's which team can get from point A to point B faster than the other. Um, you got to arrive there before them to make the tackle, or you got to arrive them before them to outrun the tackle. Um, so, you know, our running program. I think KB, as we've been here for a couple of years, has kind of expanded it a little bit, and those guys did a great job with it in the offseason. Have you seen the payoff? In yeah, so far, I think you could just look at our bodies, and I think they look a little bit leaner and a little bit more athletic, and I think we're running better. And I know from our data, from miles per hour and high speed distances, explosive efforts, prevented all those other things. They're up from when we've been here in the past. So. And Garrett talked about a yoga program. Is that new, or is that that? That's uh, something that they do on their own. That's not through us, so okay. we can provide it for them, but that's not done during the eight hours that we do it, so that's strictly a voluntary thing. Okay. So some guys do it, some guys don't. Somebody, uh, my friend here, spotted uh, David Shaw walking around. In, uh, yeah, his day. son yeah. is on our team. Yeah. Uh, Carter, number seven. Is, is he, so is came Dave, to watch his son practice. Is, he gonna, is David going to have any... Uh, Roll with the team. David's going to be there, <laughs> and I think if you ask David, this is—I'm not being sarcastic—he's just really pat, proud to be a UCLA dad, and that's his role: is to just be the father of Carter and come watch his kid play. He has another son that's going to be playing high school ball, so he's going to be kind of going back and forth between that. I think he's going to do some work for the NFL Network. So um, David's role is as UCLA dad and very, very close friend of mine. But he, he's not doing anything football-wise for us or anything like that. I think. You know, he wants to he wants to watch his kids play. So I'm 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 happy to have a UCLA dad like that on our on our <laughs> side. So in addition to the virtual reality stuff, are you trying any other new technology this camp? Like, I don't know, AI, neuro training, anything? <laughs> We're not that deep. <laughs> no, we've done the VRs for a while since we've been here. Um, but that's really kinda I think the extent of it. We still have obviously um, the regular film that we watch every single day and in that training standpoint and what we do from a teaching standpoint in the classroom, but there's there's nothing from a I, I don't know enough <clears throat> I don't know enough about the AI stuff to to delve into that. So but I think they gotta do a little bit more research for us to kinda say we, we, we don't do anything unless there's validity and it's going to help make us better um so you know with the vr stuff and the group that we worked with there's there was a lot of data on it actually adam wright our water polo coach had used it before so got a lot of feedback from adam on how it, how he could use it and how he implemented it so um we'll spend some time researching it um everything we do that we're going to add to our program if it can make us better then we'll obviously look at it but i don't know if there's enough data out there from how AI can affect the teaching in the classroom and the neurological things from a football standpoint, but I'm sure it will be pretty soon, so we'll keep an eye on it. We've heard from several uh, players that Latu, as good as he was last year, maybe he's taking another step. Have you, have you seen that? Uh, definitely. You know, I, I think last year he was coming off of almost a year and a half of not playing football. He did not go through the spring a year ago, you know, so he didn't have the benefit of having spring practices underneath his belt. I think he was still kind of getting his feet underneath him, so to speak. Um, you know, and he's had a full off season of training. Um, you know, it wasn't held out of anything, had a full spring, and then and had a great summer. So I just think it's um, the more time he can spend playing football. You get better at football by playing football, and he's had an opportunity to play a full year of football now. So he, he has made strides. Um, and that's what we're excited about, that, that this year's version is better than last year's version. And he's worked extremely hard for it. I'm, I'm really happy for him. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story about his recovery from what happened to him to where he is now. Carson Steele and uh, T.J. Harden seem to be getting a lot of attention, but you seem to have a lot of talent and size in the running back room. What can you say about those guys? Yeah, we, you know, to, as Ben said earlier, we have depth right now. Now, that doesn't mean after the Coastal Carolina we have depth, um, but, you know, I think we have some guys there, and, and we're bigger, and we were consciously wanted to get bigger at the running back spot. You know, I think after <clears throat> there was a little bit of trail off from a size standpoint from Zach, you know, TJ was a freshman, um, and then you had K Kaz and, and Keegan, who are more versatile kind of third down backs, um, move around guys. You know, played a lot of different spots for us, but I think with the size, with TJ's almost 220, Carson's 227, Colson Yankos 230, uh, Anthony Atkins is 245. I think we're bigger and thicker at, at that spot. Um, you know, we want our guys really in the mold of a running back. We want them to look like Coach Foster, so you know, that's what we're kind of trying to get to. And um, you know, I, I think we've we've got some depth there now, and those guys will continue to. You know, you get you need to have more than one, especially at that position. And when we've been successful here, we've had you know we had Josh and Felton at the same time, we had Britton and Zach at the same time. You know, you're going to have to have more than one back because of the way we run the football.
Aside from the uh, running backs and the quarterbacks, are there any uh, position battles that have been maybe sticking out uh, at this point in camp? I, I don't think sticking out, but I think they've all been really highly competitive just because of the depth there. Um, you know, we got a bunch of tight ends. You know, and Carson Ryan's back. Carson got hurt, I think, right at the, during the week of Game Five last week, last year. You know, and to add, add Carson to the mix, and then bringing in Mo as a transfer to go along with Hudson, who's played a lot of football for us. Um, you know, there's some depth at the tight end spot. You know, and then Jack Peterson's coming along as a as a young freshman. We had the opportunity to redshirt last year, so you know, you got that group in there. Um, you know, integrating uh, Jake and Kadir in with the offensive line, and then getting Seattle coming in off of injury. You know, to obviously make up for losing Neo and Gainsey and and in that group. But Garrett, I think, has taken a step in the offensive line. You know, Duke has really been. Like the guy that's been there for the longest time, but there's a battle there. I think our D-line depth is as good as it's ever been with Jay and Gary and set of any and Keanu and that group that's inside. Um, you know, you got the Murphys, you got Latu, you got Carl Jones and those guys on the perimeter. So, you know, there's a lot that are going on. But the the, the one thing I think they know is we're going to play a lot of guys. Um, so they're all just fighting for playing time, not who's the starter. But I think you need to be fresh there. Um, and the more people you have and the better the better opportunities you have, especially as the season goes along, because you're going to get worn down and there is going to be some attrition. But if you're not turning it over to somebody that's never played in the game before, you turn it over to some kids that are experienced. So we feel pretty good about where we are right now. But um, obviously that can change quickly. Just trying to quantify that depth. Do you have to remember how many guys you had in your first camp versus now? Like uh... Yeah, we had the same amount. We could have 110 back then. Um, but I think we had like 60 new faces. There, you know, I know we finished that season in our first year with 57 scholarship players, and you could have been at 85, but we didn't. We just we didn't have it, you know. So right now we're at we'll be at max. We'll be at 85, and then we were allowed this year because of the NCAA rule with COVID, and every school was, but we brought 120 to camp. So, you know, we're 10 more in camp, but that's because of COVID. Um, but if we could, if we had to bring 110, we would have had to make cuts. We didn't have to make cuts before. We were trying to get as many guys as we could to get in here. Um, so. Our numbers and depth are a lot better. With the VR stuff, how much are you guys using that on a day-to-day -day basis, and what position group do you think is seeing the most like added benefit? The quarterbacks, it started with them, but every position has used it. Um, and really, it's just up to the individual position coach of what that he has, and then the time what he has in his meeting time for that day and how long he's meeting that day and what can he use. So um, there are some applications. It's, you know, our, our tackles have used it, our running backs have used it, our free safety has used it. It's really the people that have a little bit of vision. We haven't had it on the D lineman. We haven't had it on a guard because there may be somebody really close and what his picture looks like is a little bit different. But we felt like we got some good work with our tackles with it and we've got some good work with our running backs and our quarterbacks on the offensive side of the ball. We haven't done it with the wideouts yet or tight ends, um, but we've done it with the linebackers and the safeties on the defensive side. Are the tennis balls new? Or is that like an exercise they've done before? No, we use those a ton. I mean, you're just trying to train hand-eye coordination, yeah. so we've done that all the time. We've done it with the kick returners. We do it with the receivers do a, have a whole routine with it in the offseason. Um, and then they can do that with a coach because it's not a football where we, they can catch a tennis ball. Um, so there's a lot of things, but I think there's just some carryover. So. It's probably an obvious answer, but uh, some of the players have pads on their helmets. Is that to reduce the impact of a helmet? Yeah, that's contact? something that was we, we added a year ago at certain positions, and now I, everyone that we feel is going to be in contact after doing some research. They're called guardian caps. They're mandatory in the NFL and preseason training camp, and um, specifically our O line, our D line. Our linebackers, our running backs, our tight ends are in uh, are in those because of the contact. Usually they have contact every play, but it's it's a it's a preventive thing, you know. And I, if you look at NFL training camp, that footage or most college footage, I think a lot of people have gone to it. This might be a dumb question, but why can't they wear them? Everybody wear those during the game just for safety. Is it too too heavy? There's a lot of things that go on, Ben, that I don't have answers for. Okay. So I, I don't know. I don't know the weight. I don't know the ramifications I don't I don't know there's a lot every day we get another question that that's a really good point 64 teams in one conference is a really good point <laughs> right but no one asked me and no one asked you Ben. Yeah. someone should ask you okay and it's the same thing with 64 but it's like where did that come up with? Like, no one's ever asked me before you asked me the question I gave you my thought process <laughs> So, uh, Quasi Gilmore released his commitment video to you like, yesterday for Star Recruit. It was a spoof of the Nike LeBron commercial from a couple years back. Did you see that at all? Any thoughts on that? We are not allowed to comment on current recruits because of the NCAA rules. So, um, that's not your pie. I understand you have, you have to ask the question, but I can't make any comments on 
if there was an amazing video or anything like that. So. Gotcha. Well, with the wide receiver position, you guys bring a lot of talent over the years. I mean, Jaden Marshall, Grant Gray, Jeremiah McClure, some big names. How pleased have you been with the work that Jerry Newheisel has done on the recruiting trail for you recently? Jerry's done a really good job. You know, I think he's, you know, the one thing that always resonates about Jerry is, is uh, he can speak firsthand about what this school can do for you because he went here. You know, he, he really grew up here because his dad, Rick, had coached here for such a long time. Jerry's been on this campus and probably knows this campus better than anybody. You know, you watch Jerry give a campus tour and every day. It's like, wow, I didn't even, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. But his passion for this university always shows through the recruiting process. And it's genuine and it's authentic. And I think the... You know, it's it's really sh shown through in recruiting. I think he's done an outstanding job recruiting. Right. And you also have Jay Michael Sturdivant coming in this season. Huge wide receiver acquisition for you guys. Just how critical has he been adding some talent, helping replace some offense production so far in camp for you guys? Jay Mike's been great. You know, I think the addition of both him and Kyle Ford, and I think Kyle's been great too, um, to have two older guys, because we were relatively young in the receiver room, but to have two guys that have had experience, especially the game experience that both those guys have that they bring. And then to add to Cam and Logan, um, who have been here before, you know, and played a little bit, played, played a lot for him, San Titus, you know, so we had really three guys that have played, but to add some veteran leadership um, to that young group of guys to just show them how to work, show them what, what it looks like in practice every day, what, how, how, it, how we ask our guys to train and what it looks like every single day. Those guys did an unbelievable job. Thank you. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.